In this video, we're going to be unboxing and reviewing new hand plane by the Melbourne Tool Company. A couple of things first, uh, gloves because I'll be dealing with some chemicals to clean off all the grease and I've got a whole bunch of tiny little cuts from wrestling with the cat uh, all over my hand, so don't really want to mix those. And this is not a paid review, this has not been supplied, I've bought this myself, so opinions are always my own anyway, but there's no inherent bias there. As far as I can tell, this is by Timbercon. They presenting it as if it's a separate company, but I believe it's just them with one of their home brand type things. Nothing wrong with that. The name is the Melbourne Tool Company, but they are designed in Melbourne and produced overseas. This is not inherently a problem. The name is perhaps a little bit misleading, but we'll go into that a little bit later. And the price point, there's no way this could be made in Australia. You couldn't make it in America for the same price, that sort of thing. It's very much, if you want to hit this price point, it's got to be made in China, basically. Again, nothing wrong with that. At the moment, it's going for about 160 Australian dollars, which is roughly half the price of a Lee Nielsen or a Veritas hand plane, block plane. Uh, and it's actually a little bit cheaper than the Stanley block plane. It's more comparable in price to the Luban, which I think is probably the point in the market that they're going for, which is sort of like that mid-range, but decent quality. So I've not actually looked at this. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Has information on the side. Really cool kind of cutaway diagram of uh, what the plane actually looks like. Cross section, it's nice. First impression, that's actually really nicely packaged. Got some nice custom cut foam and it arrives in corrosion inhibiting paper. So out of the box, you can see a few things that are interesting. First, it is very much a Stanley 60 and a half pattern type of plane. Got the adjustable uh, mouth on the front. It's fairly smooth for not being cleaned. It is a low angle plane. We've got a decent amount of adjustment and a good adjustment knob there. Uh, but there are a couple of unique things. The shape on the side is different. Good, bad, otherwise, I'm not really sure. The scoop here on the lever cap is interesting. It is striking if nothing else. What's interesting about this blade, it is a high speed steel blade. So it'll be a laminated blade. I can't quite make out the lamination lines. We'll have to take that to the stones to try and reveal that. It's a good thick blade. Should be high speed steel or not at least part of it. So very hard steel. Uh, will be interesting to see how that performs. Fairly standard Norris adjuster. Horse thread on one side, fine on the other. Yep, that works. You can see there's gunk everywhere, so we'll need to clean that up. With a lot of planes, one of the things that can be a problem is are they actually flat and square out on the sole? And I'm gonna be honest, that's, that's pretty good. It's maybe not that necessary to have the sides flat to the sole, but it is always nice to have, or square to the sole. It's it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's, it's really pretty good for a, a block plane. Uh, I've definitely seen worse. What I'm gonna do now is get this all cleaned up. Uh, it's basically just wipe it down with some terps to get all the grease out of it. Then I can get to giving it a bit of a flatten. Something I missed before that I want to address is the bed of the frog or where the blade sits. It's a milled surface, as you can see, we've got these milled lines here, but this is a really underwhelming job that's been done. You can see really quite heavy mill marks. Some of them you can feel quite a lot. And weirdly, it's also painted over the top. You might think, well, that's just what you get for planes in this price bracket. This is the surface of a Luban rabbiting block plane, the block plane I'm replacing with the Melbourne Tool Company one, you can see that this is a nice smooth machined surface and it's the raw iron, it's not painted over the top. So this feels very, very smooth and very, very flat, whereas the Melbourne Tool Company one does not. Now I should point out that doesn't really mean a lot. Uh, the milled surface here, and particularly back here, it doesn't really affect whether the plane works, or cuts smoothly or anything like that. It's flat enough. It's just very strange to see a milled surface that then isn't milled particularly well and then 
is painted over. I think the painting over more than anything is the really strange thing because it kind of defeats the purpose of milling it in the first place. It's strange that the competition at the same price point and above have milled surfaces and this one doesn't. Can't speak for Groz or Stanley, but a lot of the other competition do it. So it's just, it's just strange. It's something to note, it doesn't rule it out of being a workable plane. It's just strange. So it's clean, but I want to establish a baseline of how it performs before I flatten the sole and sharpen the blade. So this is just how it comes out of the box. I'm not expecting it to be razor sharp, but we'll see. Uh, that, okay, that's, that's more than I meant to take off, but um, that's, that's not bad for side grain. This is Vic Ash, so it's not horribly hard stuff. We're talking about white oak sort of hardness. The edges are going to be no different. That's working pretty well. Let's try some end grain. That's not the sharpest it could be, but that, that's cutting surprisingly well. I've worked through the grits and I'll save you some time from watching that and I'm just working on the final grit, uh, 8,000 now. It is a little bit slower being high speed steel to sharpen, but not to the point that you can't do it. I've used diamond stones, sandpaper and now water stones. It's just a little bit slower. The bevel was pretty much at a perfect 25 degrees. So I've just used the micro adjuster on this to raise it up to give it a very small micro bevel and we can put it to work. Moment of truth, I'll put some wax on the sole. We'll try some pine end grain. Let's try a bigger shaving. It's pretty smooth. of a thicker shaving. No problems. Try some red gum uh, side grain, it's very hardwood. It's nice smooth surface. Thick ash again for an end grain test. Yeah, that's a passing grade. Definitely a passing grade, that's good results. All right, conclusion time. Do you want the spicy take or the not spicy take? Because I'll give you both. Let's start with the non-spicy basic take. The Melbourne Tool Company Low Angle Block Plane works just fine. It is an aggressively priced, reasonably well-made block plane that is pretty great out of the box, requires very minimal uh, work really just sharpening, honing the blade really, not even proper sharpening, and it's ready to go, which is great. It has some downsides. While it does have a really flat sole, kudos to that as something that's very important in hand planes and is a real nightmare to fix if it's significantly out. The bed of the frog where the blade sits is pretty poor. I don't understand why that section is painted and the milling job was just not Good, basically. <laughs> the high speed steel blade will last you a lifetime most likely. It's not a unique feature. Other brands like Luban already use high speed steel and this blade came pretty much bang on 25 degrees. So a small micro bevel is really all you needed to do. You can flatten the back, but even that didn't need much. Really just a polish is all that needed. A small quibble is the locking knob here that as you twist that pushes down on the blade and the lever cap locks everything in place. Works great. It does use a finer thread than some of the competition, which just means you need to spin it more. It's not really a big deal, but it's a minor quibble. All right, spicy take time. There is nothing wrong with this plane. It works just fine. Uh, I'd be happy to use it, but it doesn't do anything different from the Luban manufactured plane for about the same price. They are of equal quality from what I can see. I have quite a few Luban planes. I've no association with them whatsoever or with the MTC plane, but they 
really feel pretty similar. Neither of them are perfect. They're not perfect in different ways, which is interesting. The milling on the bed and the paint job is just a bizarre decision that really lowers the appearance of quality, whether it's good, bad or otherwise. Uh, the design on this is nice. Like the aesthetic design of it is nice. Luban is pretty clunky. However, that's not the really controversial part. It's really the name, the Melbourne part of it. These are apparently designed and developed in Melbourne, but what does that really mean? They're still made overseas. If someone started the Melbourne Strawberry Company, you'd probably assume that the strawberries were grown in Melbourne. You wouldn't necessarily assume that they went, okay, these are the types of strawberries we want to use, let's grow them overseas. They're not hiding the fact, so they're not being outright deceptive in that regard, but I think it's still going to fool a few people, and it's a bit of a strange choice. They have other home brand names that they could use, Torcado and Baladonia. It, it just seems a bit weird. I am the sort of person who will look at spec sheets, so nothing about this was a surprise to me. So would I buy more MTC stuff? Well, at the moment, no. Their only other product is a low angle jack, which I've already got. I have the Luban flavor of that. It works great, really like it, but the MTC version is just a different exterior design. It's going to probably have the exact same Norris adjuster, probably going to have the same blade, it's going to probably have all the same components, just look a little bit different. It has a better machine bed than what the MTC plane will have, so it, it isn't a compelling option. I do like the look of the MTC stuff a little bit more, but that that's very superficial and isn't enough reason to go for that rather than a Veritas or Lee Nielsen plane instead. If they introduce a plane that I'm after, maybe. At this stage they haven't really given a compelling reason to get this over existing options on the market. It's great to have more competition on the market, but this has no outstanding features that are must-haves that I will rant and rave about. It's good, it's just not great.